boom, we're here. We're doing it. It's recording. Man, we are here right now. Mark Crawford. What's up, man? Woo-woo. Mark Crawford, people. Okay, so let's just start for people that listening that like maybe don't fully know. Mark was one of the few lucky attendees <laughs> of Fire Festival 2017. 2017. Correct. The one and only. The one, the and, one only. and only. It was uh, quite... A uh, an ordeal, an ordeal to behold, to be sure. Yeah, and so I, uh, so I, so you're on both the documentaries, but yep. I saw you on the uh, Netflix one, and uh, I fucking thought it was so funny. Yeah, uh, specific, specifically you because it was like, you know, how you see some people on documentaries and you go, oh, they're putting on for this or whatever. Oh yeah, it yeah, literally yeah, yeah. seemed like they just hit you up and were like, hey, talk about this, and then you had no. Oh, I didn't even think we were going to film. I just, I was like, I strolled into this apartment and they were saying, you know, well, why don't you just sort of chat about the documentary? And we were talking more about the footage that we had than oh. the thing. And they were like, listen, just have a seat. <laughs> I said, For sure. Real? Yeah, oh, okay. more or less. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. So that was one of the things that people brought up. They were like, uh, everyone was asking about your shirt and they were like, was that his choice? Like, did he know he was shooting that day? Like, some people love the shirt. Some people were like, "What the people fuck? hate the shirt, dude?" It, how it's weird wild. is it? How how people specific people get about they things. zone in, they zone in, and they've zoned in on the shirt. Like, why would he pick? I mean, friends and family have reached out and been like, "Why on earth did you wear that <laughs> shirt for this documentary?" I'm like, "Listen, first of all, it looks real nice. You know, mm-hmm. green is a good color for a redhead. I've been told, and I feel that that is true. I thought it looked good." So much mixed. I feedback, thought it looked though. good too. So much mixed feedback. But ev- yeah, everyone was yeah. What was it? The shirt. People were. Some people were fans of the haircut. I'm. A, I'm a fan of the hair. I love the hair. I it's like funny the hair. you bring this up. I have begun receiving, and people are always like, "Oh, what's happened to you since it got released? What's happened to you since yeah. it got released?" And I've begun. You know, you get a couple more followers. People hit you up. Everyone comes out of the woodwork. People yeah. you haven't talked to since summer camp are like, <laughs> "Hi, what's up?" And I'm like, "They're I'm, like, you're famous now." You're like, "Dude, I'm on a documentary about a failed." Festival. Yeah, right. Like <laughs> this is not the way to be known. <laughs> this is not. But it's funny because people just try to start a conversation like you've been talking this whole time. Like people uh, you haven't okay. talked yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Right, people you haven't talked to in like ten years. It's just start a conversation. It's like, "Hey, what's up?" Yeah, pretending like. Yeah, and you're like, dude, like, like this. Uh, you're not fooling anyone. This yeah, yeah. I, I know why you're hitting me up. Yeah, what <laughs> are you? What's idiot. going on here? This is like, what do you want? But uh, okay. so many pieces of unsolicited advice, like really unsolicited advice about the shirt and about the hair. Like you're really hot, but you'd be hotter if you cut your hair and you didn't wear that ugly shirt. I'm like, well, this is. <laughs> You're like, we haven't talked since sixth grade. No, strangers. These are like Instagram uh, message requests. Oh, how many requests do you think you've got? It's probably like 10 to 15 a day since the release. Damn. Yeah, and they're all people who... Some of them are people that I knew from a different life, you know? And some of them are just total strangers who are just reaching out to give their advice on what I should be doing. Or just, hey, I am watching you right now on my TV. Oh, that's cool. I'm I like, guess. Thanks for thanks yeah. for saying hi. Wait, what is? What you mean other life? You mean just like when you were younger? Yeah, just when I was younger. Like oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. And they're just hitting that's you up. Cool. And and also, here's a new one: unsolicited nudes. What? I know. Do you Gr- get this? Girls, guys, Do you get both. What? The works. <laughs> the whole thing. The whole I shebang. I have only gotten unsolicited nudes from dudes. Okay. Well, they're and the bolder class. They are definitely the bolder sure. class. And I'm not gay, and I'm still just like, all right, dude, I don't know what I'll it take is. This. Exactly. Sure. I mean, I, and you know the thing, I, for people who don't know this, and no, I didn't know it before, but when you get a nude on Instagram, you have to, it, you have to tap it. It's this black box, right? Yeah, you yeah, tap yeah. it once, and it's sort of a fuzzy picture. You're like, is that a no? Like, is you tap it again, right and you're now? like, shit, that's a dick. And it's a lot of them are action shots, too. So you got, oh, like, you mean like a dude mid stroke? Yeah, mid, or like, or like mid sex, like mid penetration. No, action way. Shots. I shit you know. You've gotten ones mid penetration. Mid penetration action shots, completely unsolicited, no captions either, by the way. Just, just, oh, just no. Three or four pictures, no, like, hey, let's hang out, no text wow. at all. Just these, just these pictures. I'm like, let's map this train of thought. Okay, so you're sitting at home, you're watching a Netflix documentary. Okay. And yeah. you see this kid come on the screen, and you're like, you know what? He seems a little funny. He seems like a good time. Yes. So now you're going to look him up on Instagram. That's, that's one exactly. thing to do. All right. So you, you flip back, right, to get the name. Then you uh-huh. see him on Instagram. Now you're going to 
follow him. All right, fine, sure. You're going to like a couple photos short. You're going to send him a message. This is another level. And you're gonna, that message is going to be nudes? Yeah, dude, what are you doing? Outrageous. Outrageous, Outrageous. and uh, ballsy. And definitely something men would do. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right, right. It the, definitely the, makes sense that guys are doing that. The female one, I got one woman's nude, and it just was, it was good? from. How was it? It was a little bit spotty. Ah, uh, really? It was a little unfortunate. Bad lighting. Yeah, something was going on. Some, <laughs> some like sort of oh. flaps. Oh, oh. Of, of fat. oh, she was fat. Okay, yeah, <laughs> she, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was not. You can just say she was fat. Was yeah, not yeah. a fit woman. Ah, uh, okay. Who hey, chose you to know send what? this through? Which is honestly even more bold because I figured, and it wasn't like a fraudulent account either. As it looked it wasn't like one of those no oh, it was a girl that was feeling herself she's feeling it she was watching the documentary and listen i loved it it was great. you know what i, I love I, the thought i i you love the thought that yeah. she would i uh, commend her for saying i love my body i'm i'm going oh, to send sure. this dude my i don't give a, i know that i'm not any of those instagram models that was at fire festival yeah, right, right but i'm showing him right now <laughs> what i've got in case he's in case he's buying i mean you kind of know the type right of the people People who went to the festival and, and oh god you yeah know, right you know the the things that they're sort of into and that they're not so the this yeah, yeah. is like yeah, the people that are going are like you know uh, they're going to be into more f- superficial stuff we can say that we from can the say top, that from 100%. the top percent from the top um so but i mean there were a couple people that because i haven't seen the hulu one i've only seen the netflix one you i know? don't i don't have hulu should i should i watch it to be honest so i I went in and I started watching it and okay. I got about halfway through and I couldn't, I didn't have the attention span for it. It really? bounces a lot. Now, is that you so, or is it the documentary? I don't know. I, <laughs> did you not have the jewel on you? I didn't take the Adderall you before. Didn't, I didn't take the Adderall before. The, the, uh, I mean, if you need to take Adderall before a documentary, <laughs> then, you then it's problem. a bad documentary. That's and you do true. have a problem. You're right. But it's a bad documentary. The, the documentary, I thought it bounced a lot. The other piece that really confused me is they use Siri to read the testimony of Billy McFarlane's mother. So you're sitting here casually watching this documentary and all of a sudden, you know, your Alexa is activated from another room because all of a sudden you've got this robot talking and it's just like, Billy McFarland was a lovely boy yeah. when he was growing up. And it's just that's really what? uncomfortable. That's yeah. really weird. weird. I mean, you can't hire Very someone weird. to do VO. No, apparently not. Jeez. They spent all their money on Billy. It is, I know. So apparently they, do uh-huh. you know, they they paid Billy for. Yeah. The, so as I understand it, well, as, uh-huh. as I know from, you know, all of the, the Netflix stuff is Netflix and the whole production team and Chris is a fantastic director. Chris. Chris okay. Yeah. And what's his full name? Let's look that up. Hold on. The full, the, the yeah. director. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you knew because you, because no, you had worked with him, right? Yeah. Yeah. One second. I mean, I can just It'll look it up right good. here. Yeah. Yeah. People are like, you should have known this before. I know. Fire Festival, Netflix. I got it. We're good. Smith. I did know this. Oh, Chris, Chris Smith. Smith. It's okay. so fucking easy. Okay. So, <laughs> Chris, so Chris Smith. Smith yeah. He's a phenomenal director. Uh-huh. And uh, he made it very clear in the beginning of this, like, listen, I'm not paying for interviews because a, a portion of the proceeds of the whole Netflix documentary is going back to the people in the Bahamas. Oh, that got, really? Right. Looted. Who got literally just... Fucked totally over. fucked. That poor woman, Marianne, who had to yeah, man. dip into her savings. She fifty white, k, fifty k. I can't believe in she the did Bahamas. That. Keep in mind, I, right? yes, you're like, right. Everyone's reeling here. Like fifty thousand dollars in $50, New York. Dollars like, in Bahamas is so much more. Fifty thousand dollars in Great Exuma could you could like practically retire. I mean, good yeah. grief. This stuff is not expensive. She's probably saving up to retire. And it, I, that's, that was my thing. But it's wonderful. People really rallied together and there was that GoFundMe. There's that GoFundMe that, that made over, over like 200, 200, I think oh. it was over $200,000. Jeez. Look that up. The, and there's another What's GoFundMe her now. Her name is Mary Ann. I'm not good with the last name. So look, Mary Ann Fire GoFundMe. Yeah. Um, Exuma Point. Yeah, Fire Fest Fiasco. How much did it make? Right now, it's made one hundred and eighty-six thousand, almost two hundred thousand dollars. Yes, and there's another GoFundMe that went up to uh, raise money to pay all of the day laborers who were also not paid. You know that that guy is in the documentary yeah. he talks about how he had to get on a boat and he's never gone back to the island because people were because people were threatening going him. to his house and threatening him. Wow! The, there is a fund now to raise money to pay all of them back, and so Netflix basically said, "Listen, we're not going to mm-hmm. pay you, but we'll pay the money that we may have paid to you towards the." 
Bahamas, the people, the po- and people the people, the people that you fucked over. Yeah. And my understanding is, is Hulu was just sort of like, we'll pay you cash. And Billy said, sure. I mean, it's a Billy thing to do, right? I mean, are Damn. we surprised? Look at this guy's history. So. I know, but like yeah. Hulu was trying to yeah. get one up on Netflix and almost be like, we were the better doc. And then I thought that he sort of drowned out the documentary too, right? Because then it just became about him. It was all about. It wasn't about fire. It was about him, which was an interesting documentary to have, Uh right? For sure. So we've learned about Billy, and now we've got the Netflix one, so that we can learn about me. Exactly. (laughs) Learn about Mark. Yeah, Mark Crawford. It was. um, I. I Excuse me. They but they also paid him like. A good amount of money, right? The rumor that I... And this is completely unsubstantiated, yes. but the rumor I heard was a quarter million dollars. What? Yeah. That Hulu pays Billy McFarland. He also just had a... Okay, let me let me ask you this. When you saw him on screen, I immediately looked at him was like, I would not believe anything well, coming out of his mind. that you say that because neither would I. It's it, Even looking at the footage of him in interviews... Before the festival, like with the Magnesis card and with fire and with he investors, just has that he looks squinty up. Yeah. face, bro. That you're just like something about his face. It looks like you just, so you just go, untrustworthy. Oh, he's a liar. Yeah, he this lies. this man is not to be believed. He looks like he's coked up to the eyeballs. He looks like he is on some kind of steroid, and he's mm-hmm. just like. Well, what we're going to do is just, you know, we'll take everybody and their money, and we'll go down to the Bahamas, and it's going to be great. Yeah. Like, you are lying. This isn't, and so even when we were there in the Bahamas and I had a conversation with Billy standing there on this island when everything was going to shit and everyone's screaming and running around and trying to find a tent and there's like gravel flying and people screaming and bags going on. I mean, Billy is standing there and in his heart of hearts, you could tell that he believed in that moment that everything was going to be okay. Oh, he's still diluted, in... diluted down to the final second. Did like you talk the, to him? Yeah, I mean, you talk. I didn't even know that the guy was responsible for throwing the festival. What did when you we say were to down him? there? We were just trying to find a tent, and it was just this conversation of like, where can we go to get a tent? What are we supposed to be doing right now? What is, you know, what's going on? And I actually gave him the advice that. If he was associated with this, he should really get out of here because this wasn't going to end well. And I had no idea who he was. I mean, and then in like, you know, a matter of an hour, somebody was like, that's the guy who threw all of this together. And I was like, uh-oh, he's getting oh, out he's of here. Fucked. Yeah, he's that guy's just giving him some it. advice. I'm surprised the the, the Bahamians, or I don't know, how to, Bahamanians? Bahamanians? There's such a debate about this. Ba- there's also Bahamans, Bahamans, Bahamians. Okay. And then there's another school of thought where it's Bohemians. And I don't think that's right. But no, then, Bohemians is like the people totally in the 60s, the rap city. Right? Yeah. But someone <laughs> Bohemian rap city. <laughs> but someone was really, really uh firm about it being Bohemians. Afro Bahamians, Bahamas. Let's just okay, we'll call them the Bahamians. We'll call, yeah. the, the decision was when I did my filming to call them locals. Locals because okay. we couldn't, Didn't know we how couldn't to, remember. Yeah. The locals here. Yeah, okay, so Let's let's just go back to when you first heard about the festival and then how we got to where it was. Like, did you hear about it before the orange blocks? Did you see the orange blocks? No. So I posted an orange block back in the day. No, you didn't. Yeah, of course. What? Well, we, it was. Listen. A friend of mine came over to my apartment and basically just was pitching this extravagant vacation and i am all about a good vacation You're all about the good vacation I mean, who's not about a good vacation yeah. and then when you think about this you know it is four days all of the food is inclusive you have this beautiful little tented accommodation on the beach and the sketches of the tents were oh, yeah, gorgeous, amazing you know so we're like all right this is this is going to be good we're going to have two double beds we're going to have a little lounge area like a little living room a you know it, bathroom it was just you and a friend that were going just me and one friend and how much were they pitching it to cost? So when you map all of that out, and yeah. that alone would be like probably two thousand dollars. If exactly plus now you're going to have a flight to and from Miami, that's which is included? included in this. So oh. say that's three thousand dollars now. Now you're also going to a festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a luck, and all of this is now not just existing, but it's luxury. Yeah, that's on five, a- six thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah. Easy, easy, six to seven thousand dollars for the ticket. But they're uh-huh. only charging like three grand 
Oh. So because it's pre-sale. So we are we're looking at these tickets and we're looking at this promotional video and we're assuming that, you know, that island that's in the promotional video is the island that we're going to. The Pablo Escobar Island. Norman's Key. Yes. Because it was the island that we were supposed to be going yeah, to yeah, until yeah. everything until went to he hell in mentioned a handbasket. That that it <laughs> was idiot. Pablo Escobar's <laughs> island and the guy that owned it was like, All right, word, well, you you're not using say it. This. Like, yep. Get I out. told you not to say that. So nice try. You're not using it anymore. Uh, figure it out what a loser oh God. the uh, the whole so we we booked these tickets because we thought it was a fantastic deal yeah and uh, i had never been to a festival then i've never been to a festival now i'm not a big festival guy oh I you're just, not okay you're no, not a festival dude. no i mean okay. it, honestly at the time i i'm not even really a big concert guy i just thought okay. this would be a fun thing to do so you were more in it for like the full vacation yeah feel. i mean okay. you know go see some concerts have some great food go on exactly. a jet ski i love the bahamas yes. you know i Who was doesn't? cold it was january like, uh, oh january <laughs> Was when it was released, well, released something yeah. like that it was the middle of winter they didn't put these tickets on sale yeah. until like months before the uh, you know the festival was in yeah April. yeah yeah but so then you know things are going on and there was supposed to be this treasure hunt to own mm. a piece of the island and to, there were all of these prizes that were buried so it was you know there was this mindset of well we spend this money now but we might get it all back in the treasure hunt we're like fuck the concert who cares about blink one and you really like, believe go- this well, why would you not? <laughs> you know, it's so easy to say now that this was a For fraud. Sure. You're right. But there's there was no history then to this say is this never, is... This has also never happened. Right. I, get, I get it. People listening are probably... <clears throat> and even you watching, you go, I would never believe that. There's no way that makes sense. But and no there's one never together. been a festival yeah. that has done this. No. And also, like, Ja Rule... Even though he's not the most famous dude ever, he is a known person. No, he's a known figure. Exactly. Yeah. So you're like, he's not going to... There's uh, some kind of credibility yeah. there. And no one at the time that I read about had pieced together this whole piece of Magnesis. Oh, right? Okay. So everybody now is like, well, this guy did Magnesis. Why would you trust him for the festival? I'm like, no one knew that the this festival guy was the Magnesis guy. And also... Who the hell has heard about Magnesis? Also, like, here, did you? No, I don't no, know what like, Magnesis yeah. was. Also, it, to be honest, people doing that hindsight bullshit. If you see something, um, if if you see something that's advertised and it's advertised by a bunch of very high profile, famous people, right. and it's got Ja Rule connected to it, you're not about to go look up. Who's running it? I'm sorry, dude. Maybe Why some you? people will, but most of you will be like, oh, this seems legit. You go to the website. Website looks legit. Oh, Kendall Jenner posted about it. Okay, she's not going to get involved with some sketch. Most right. people are not going to think, and yeah, that was it. maybe you should have done a little bit to say, oh, is Golden Voice doing this? Is it the people that do Elements? But- a lot and of we did stuff. some Googles, and it, there were all of these posts about why are all these Instagram models down in the Bahamas? There's like so this, much they, press so on much it. There's so much buzz, yes. and so we just said, it made sure. it seem legit. Yeah, sure. Like buckle us in. You yes, know, like exactly. lock me in. I'll take a package. Okay. We'll do weekend one. Like sure, yes. why not? And and here's a here's a great cash flow problem that Billy backed himself into. You uh. could finance this for zero percent in monthly installments. It's something nobody talks about. You could pay. Your four thousand dollar tent over the course of six months in monthly installments with zero percent interest. Just they would just charge your credit card every month. It was like a subscription it up would until be the like festival. Seven hundred dollars or whatever for. So yeah. it was like it was you know you know what five hundred dollars a month or something. You who cares for this That's festival? That's really not yeah. You know, and it wasn't like you're out of pocket all this money all at once. So we joke in hindsight because we got our money back. That okay, it was you did. a fantastic savings plan because we put <laughs> this money away every month. Three, get, three or four out. grand. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, so you hear about the festival. We hear about the festival. We book it, and then we we post those orange tiles because you were we were supposed to get a an inside hint to the treasure hunt. If you post the orange if we tile, posted the orange tile. Oh shit! Yeah. So they were trying to get that orange tile posted by everyone. Everyone, not just the Instagram models. Like everyone. Do you still have that on your Instagram tile. now? Yeah, I think so. You do. I'm if gonna... not, if not, then I archived it, and I really should wow. put it back out. See, they didn't talk about that either. That, no. That's even more. I don't nefarious. know that anybody knew that. Actually, come to think about it, I don't know that I remembered to. Uh... That's wild. Is it, it still on here? What, is it on there? Yeah, let me see. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's gone. I gotta put it back on. Jeez. I should post it now. That's yeah, exactly post it right now. <laughs> I'm that, back. So, okay, so they have you post it, and then you see everyone freak out about it, and then Everyone's it sells out. out in like a day, right? Well. 
general admission sold out in a day, right? Okay. There were still tent packages, which was uh-huh. what basically everybody had, and villa packages and all this stuff, but they just... They set themselves up for such failure from a cash flow perspective because yeah. they weren't charging enough money for the festival. Like even if everyone paid full price, they didn't have enough money to throw this festival. It was it's like Billy's, twenty-seven or thirty million dollars. Yeah, it's Billy's problem with every single venture that he ever started. Magnesis. He anyone will buy a ticket to a Beyonce concert for two hundred dollars, and then he goes and buys the ticket for seven hundred dollars, and is um you know. A but, miracle because it only he only you know charged people two hundred dollars for it. Like yeah, he's you're losing, losing money on that. It's easy to so, make. So, but isn't that kind of what a lot of people will do in the beginning? They'll take the hit because they want yes. to gain. Yes. But so, how do you like? How do you balance that? You know, like you make what's a the, business plan. Yeah, because you know? I mean, isn't isn't that what Bezos did for a while? He was yeah. taking cuts with oh, the yeah. two day shipping and undercutting people with. Um, what the prices were on Amazon in general. Just to get Amazon to but be the behemoth. Yeah. he was losing probably not 200% like that was. Because if you pay seven fifty for a ticket and then sell it for two fifty, Well, and they losing. have their own capital. You know, you're not losing money yeah. on, on this. If you, and I, he did have a business plan, but he was never honest about the finances. Like if he had been, if he had come out and said, all right, you know, we only have $60,000. We're spending $20 million. I mean, yeah, you'd never get an investor, but at least... You, yeah. You could try or you know you could get it the whole thing was just insane wild. Okay, so you get it and then you're like getting we get ready. It. We're getting and you're ready. Like getting stoked. Oh yeah. You're excited to go. Yep. You've never gone to a festival before. Yeah. You're like it's a payment plan so it's it's a lot of money but it's not as much as 3k yeah, and more. Yeah, you got it. You're making it with your um your job cuz you have like a good 9 to 5 yeah, yeah. that you have to wear, you know, the uh, Button up, you gotta wear up my, stuff. I gotta wear yeah. my Vineyard Vine shirts. Gotta wear your Vineyard Vine shirts. <laughs> you didn't know. And then, so, um, did you have any any feeling that the festival was gonna go? You know, we every we had a couple of friends who were supposed to go, and they all didn't go because okay. they were like, "This thing just seems really sketchy." There's no updates about it. And as it was as it was coming up, you know, we kept trying to reach out for more information, and they're just they there was no information for us to get. And booking the private plane from Miami to Great Exuma Uh was on the jankiest website you've ever seen. They put out this website because everyone was like, when is my fucking plane to get to Great Exuma? How am I getting there? What is going on? So they were Mm -hmm. like, okay, everybody please reserve your flights on this website. And they threw up this website. And it was on social media or an email or something? No, they emailed it to everyone. It's this orange website with these drop down menus, no branding anywhere. And it just was this page that you went on and you had to type in your passport information. Oh God. And I, because for customs. And so I remember it's an international flight. I remember sitting on that page and just thinking to myself this feels really funny but you mm-hmm. know you've already spent the money and you want to go anyways and it's a first year festival there's going to be hiccups right so you, yeah you just kind of ignored it because you because you want to go because you want to go all those people that were there and you you just want to go to this island too i mean it's beautiful there's like a sunken plane in the water there's these yeah. beautiful coral reefs we don't know that it's on a gravel lot at this point we think it's in a you beautiful still think oasis. it's on norman's yeah, key right. we yeah. still think it's on norman's and d- key when you bought it were you like i think some of those instagram models will be there not right. Honestly, didn't I didn't even think about it. Oh, you didn't care about that? No. You were you were like, I just want to be chilling on a beach. I just want to be hanging out at a beach. With my friends. Yeah. yeah. And May- having yeah. a good time. Maybe hook up with someone. Don't really care right. about that. Right. Like, don't, you know, just exactly. sort of have a, have a blast. And, you know, if they're there, then sure, they can hang out too. But it, that wasn't sort of like the big draw to that me. That was the big the draw for everyone. Everyone's like, millennials want to hang out with Instagram models. Yeah, because like, a lot Ugh. of people were shitting on it and were like, oh, they saw all these these uh influencers and that's why they wanted to go they're so stupid for thinking that but you're like i didn't you weren't even you weren't thinking about that you were signed or you were convinced because of how nice it looked right it was it was the luxury festival aspect of it it's music it's luxury it's this beautiful island no fucking poor people (laughs) right get them out (laughs) it was supposed to be a great a great time so That's sort of how I ended up going. And then, I mean, obviously, like, once we so, got to the Miami airport, okay. that's when it became very clear that it was not going to be going well. Really? They have these little folding tables. Well, we get off the plane in Miami, like, our commercial flight okay. down, and then we try to go and find where we're supposed to be going to get on this private plane, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. And so I'm thinking, well, where do you go to get on a private plane? The private yeah, airport. Exactly. Not 
in Fire Festival, you sure don't. So you go, <laughs> you go out of the airport like you're uh-huh. trying to leave, okay, through security and everything, and yeah, then yeah. you you turn right back around, and there's a little, a little folding table. And it's got these four little sad, overstressed legs. It's like your grandma's folding table. Oh, and like it's about to break. Like a, it's about to break. And there is this disgruntled-looking gentleman. This is the first fire festival employee we see on this entire thing. Mm-hmm. This disgruntled-looking man standing behind it, and he's got three five-gallon buckets full of these wristbands. And it, there's an eight and a oh. half by eleven piece of paper that has been stapled to the ratty tablecloth <laughs> that's on top of this table, and it just says fire check in here that's it and i remember i just started cracking up i said this is hysterical and i went up to him i said hi there you know can we can we check in you know what actually you know we went up to the kiosk for the airline first because they told us that they chartered planes from this bootleg airline and they were like oh you need to go and check in with him we Uh, just sort of looked down the terminal we were like are you sure about that like that random dude with a table table did he just buy that from Osh? Like, what are you saying? <laughs> and then they wanted our credit cards because so we got to the table and they, you know, you had to get your wristband and you would already put money on the wristband, but then they wanted us uh-huh. to put more money on the wristband. Oh, because they there. before they emailed you and they were like, fill up your wristband with. Oh yeah, some weeks money. before, and they're calling us and trying to get you know pander really? us to put more money on the wristbands. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, they're like, this woman, they're, they're they're pushing you a lot, pushing, yeah. pushing and pushing and pushing. This woman calls. And wants me to add thousands of dollars onto the wristband. And I already put money on the wristband online. Exactly. And so I actually got so uncomfortable in the phone call, I hung up. I thought it was fraud. I thought it was a fraudulent person who had yes. somehow gotten the fire list and uh-huh. was calling people to get their credit card information. Turns out it was actually fire because they needed money to pay Amazon with their fucking soggy mattresses. So they were oh. trying to get... It's a Ponzi scheme, right? You're yeah, getting yeah, more yeah. money from the to, in order to pay... And then... Holy shit. Okay, so you sign in, you get on the plane, you sign land, on the plane. and then you get to the festival, and you're at the festival, it's nice, you're on a beat, you're on an island. Did did you see any of the press before, like that fire is fake Twitter, or any of the news coming no. out showing like, no. hey, they made this look like it was a private island, but actually it's just gravel on like on the other side of the Sands no. Resort. So we are we started talking to people at the actual Exuma Airport once uh-huh. we got off of the plane, and we were like, "Where the fuck are we? What island is this? So who are these mm-hmm. people? Where is our luggage? What is going on? Like, yeah. what, what is happening here?" And they uh, people started piecing stuff together. Some people knew people who had worked at Jerry Media. Some people knew people who had worked at you know Fire. Some people knew people who had worked at you know in the Bahamas. And mm-hmm. everybody had a different piece of the story. Like Jerry, I mean Jerry hadn't heard anything in months. And the Fire people were like, "Oh, the app is failing." And this is saying you know like, "Oh, I saw this on the website that it's you know oh. actually a gravel lot." And then and this is when people's just I mean the rumor mill starts rumors worrying, worrying and worrying and worrying and yeah. worrying. And it's a gossipy group of people, and everybody's drunk. For sure. so, Yes. It's just, I mean, that doesn't help. People that have money gossip and everyone's drunk. Gossip, so, yes. gossip, gossip. So we get on the bus, right? And the school bus pulls us down along and you were driving and every, the, everyone's just screaming and shouting in the school bus and we're trying to badger the bus driver. But how are you guys already drunk? Were you drunk from the plane? We were drunk from the airport. Oh, you guys were drinking. We were waiting in the airport for eight hours. Eight hours? It was, well, something like that. I mean, we were wow. waiting in the airport for hours and hours and hours because they wouldn't let the flights there because the campsite wasn't ready. So we were delayed in the airport and people were just passing this around bottles of tequila. Thursday or Friday? With the first, it was, the first, must have been okay. on the I guess Friday, Friday was the first day. Friday yeah, yeah, the first Friday. Day. Yeah. So you're just in the airport. We're in the airport. Some kids have bottles of tequila. Just getting and just drunk, passing at like them around, at like having a because we thought we're going to an exactly. island. You know, like I know. why oh, would we need our wits about us? It makes sense, man. <laughs> yes. Everything's and they're still sending emails, being like, "Your luxury shuttles will take you from the airport oh, to so they're fire." Totally they're playing still it up. Yeah. pretend like I mean, even down to the last second, it's like the music playing on yes. the Titanic while oh, it's going down all the way down. <laughs> so. So you get into the school so bus. So we get into this and yellow school like, bus. What and the fuck is this? Talking to the bus driver, he's like, "Where are we going? What are we?" And he's like, "Oh, just you wait until you see this." He's like, "Just you wait until you get a lick of this, because you are not gonna like. You're not gonna be very interested in this. You're not gonna like what you're getting yourself into." Oh my god! And we're, I mean, everyone's freaking out. There are people being like, "What? What is he saying? Like, I don't understand." And people are getting angry, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, there's Obviously. a lot of people who spent a lot of money yeah, on yeah. this, especially the people that probably spent like. 20 grand for tens and right, shit. Right, yeah. all of that kind or, of stuff. Yeah. And I mean, also, when you think about it, there were a lot of people there who really probably shouldn't have spent that much money to go to a festival. But, and yes. Which was an, a very under-talked about piece of it all. Be, but there really? were a lot of people who 
in the airport on the way back when everybody, when half of the people are just talking about calling up Amex and disputing it, uh-huh. the other half of the people are having a panic attack because they bought this with their debit card from their local bank and they spent all of their money on this festival. Oh, and there's no shit. way that they're getting that money back. And they needed that money. Like they invested was, yeah. to go and see these Instagram models because they wanted to be influencers. They wanted to be, oh, really? Yeah, there was a, there's a whole school of people who were basically investing in this festival to go and be seen and to see and be seen and help try their, to help their career. Like they wanted to become accounts. Instagrammers. Oh God. And I mean. so they saved up their money and they saved up their money and they spent it all on this festival and they were I mean, they're just victims of a of a scam, fraud, yeah. of a fraud. I mean, they, that was to me the worst the part, worst part of no the of the festival goers crowd. You know, because I, I got all my money back. I yeah, disputed it all yeah. with Amex. Like it, it was fine because it was fraud. So Straight you get fraud. it back. Like it's yes. just that's how it works. But it, that was really rough. And to see those people realize that they that weren't they are back, out like uh, at least four thousand like dollars minimum. Yeah, and they. Ha- I mean, the fact that they were like trying to become influencers. I may, I might not like them very much, but I don't right, want these them were to, not the I best people them, to be knowing anyway. But I don't but want like, them to lose four thousand dollars. Certainly not for this. Yeah, it's, but it's so like, we pull up to the we pull up to the campsite. Okay, and we pull up and. I don't know why nobody has talked about this. I've said it in every single fucking interview. The <laughs> whole perimeter of this campsite was chained in like a prison. It there looked like were, a FEMA camp. Dude. It literally was chained in with sky high chain link fencing, like a prison that went across the driveway that somebody had to manually open this gate like you were going into a federal penitentiary. <laughs> like this man, we the school bus stops and everyone's like, where the hell are we right now? Like what is going on? Yeah. This man comes out and begins unchaining the fence. We're like, huh, this doesn't this look doesn't right. Good. And we pull over, there's this hill, so we can't see the white tents yet, right? We pull in and oh, around. Yeah. Oh. No, you just see the gate and the hill. Ah. And so you think like, oh, we're like just on the other just side on the other of horizon. this yep. is just going to be this luxury festival. There's the mm-hmm. beach. You can hear the water. Nope. So we pull over this pile of garbage, mind <laughs> you. Okay. This hill that was basically a dump that had been plowed over. Oh, and literally. Then, oh. This pile of garbage. And we round the corner and you just see this sea of little white dots because we're up, right? And you have to drive down oh, and into the yeah. So you can look down and it just looks like somebody spray painted a sheet of bubble wrap white. There's Jeez. no organization to the tents. There's this aerial view of what the mock-up was of the tents that looks like uh-huh. these nice little starburst formations. And it's like, that yeah. looks like lovely. It was not like that because they'd oversold the festival. So they uh, were packing tents. As many tents as, as many they could. As many tents as they So there, I mean, you couldn't even get around some of the tents. They were right next to each other. It was it's like terrible. Oh. Oh, yeah. So then you're just, we're just driving. And driving. Did and people driving. everyone get silent? Through, just like, oh no, screams. People are because <laughs> because the bus driver is uh-huh. we say, Well, what is this? What is going on? And it was the bus driver who told us, Oh no, this is where you're staying. You guys are sleeping in those tents. There are no houses, there are no villas, those are your tents. You are sleeping there. And you see these piles of mattresses and these just you know, scattered debris all over the place, pieces of tables, pieces of you know. Uh, ma- rugs at places yeah. and chairs that they were going to assemble and these Tables. Amazon crates of you know really? of, of, because they bought all this stuff on Amazon they were crates oh, they did? from Amazon <laughs> of I mean talk about cost effective right like yeah, what yeah, they, yeah, yeah, these yeah. idiots they there were crates of Amazon shipping pallets that were full of chairs and tables and mattresses uh-huh. and all of this crap and. You were driving through it, and some people in the bus are crying. I'm, you know, <laughs> screaming. My friend Sophia is just like, what the hell is this? But half of us are just cracking up because it's, I mean, it's absurd. And it's like, right off the bat, you know that this is never going to happen again, and you know that this is bad. This but, is going to be a shit show. But you also, at that point in time, had no idea how disorganized it was going to be once you got off the bus. Yes. Because I was thinking, all right, well, this is this is ridiculous. This is fraudulent. This is like, never I'm happening again. I'm going to get my money back, but we'll but still go to the festival we'll still go get to the drunk. Festival. Yeah. Have a good time. You, we get off the bus, and that's when all of a sudden you realize that not only is this a fraud, but these people are 
in way over their head. Uh-huh. These people have no ability to control a crowd. They have no idea what's going on around them. They, they, they're screwed. They have one person in front of another folding table <laughs> who's trying to direct all of these people to tents, right? And he has like an, his MacBook open and he's trying to like sort through everybody's name and assign them to a tent number. But then you uh-huh. find out that there are no tent numbers on the tents. So this is bullshit. Yeah. This is another lie. And so Billy finally goes, oh, everybody just go grab a tent. Pandemonium. Because at this point, we've been waiting in, in line for another two hours in the hot Bahamian sun. Oh, God. With people trying to pour tequila down our throats. Oh, because this... there's all of these influencer models. This is not at the restaurant. This Got is it. There's all of these influencers around us who are trying to pretend like everything's fine. We're like, just have some Casamigos. Like, get a yeah, little yeah, tequila. Yeah. I'm like, and I told one of them, I said, I get it. You're doing your job and you have to do this. But please don't do this to me. <laughs> Like get away from me, bitch. Yeah. This is and you know at this point everyone's just trying to sober up too to to try to be able to handle this situation because people are realizing like oh this is this is not like I need to have my wits about we me need to because, make decisions here because we're on an island in right. another country chained and, in by exactly a fence. and I don't know how we can get back and it's very visibly unsafe right when you're there even in this yeah. beautiful environment of the sun and the palm trees and all of this stuff you're in yeah. a gravel lot there's broken glass all over the place there's another chain link fence that's partially in disrepair that is preventing you from falling into this ravine that is oh that's between that's them that's between yeah. that's in the middle of the campsite right that, that goes lagoon into thing the water that goes right? into the water. What was it, like 40 feet up? Yeah, it's like way up. There's this drop, and the tent is in no good condition. The, sorry, not the tent. The, the yeah, fence the is fence. in no good condition. So now you've got all of these concerns, and you're just racking them up. And now it's like, where's my luggage? Where am I going to get water? They only seem to have tequila. Like, yeah. where <laughs> is the wa- where's this fucking Evian that everybody's wanna, talking about uh, now? Exactly. Like, I wish we had it then. Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. So the thing about Andy. <laughs> like, like, I mean, good God. Like, where was the Evian? Like, <laughs> that, the fact that that dude was about Wild. to And he's such a good dude. I mean, the, have you met him? Yeah, he was at the premiere. Oh, really? The nicest guy. Do you think you would have sucked a dick? for all that Evian? I just don't know. <laughs> it's so hard to say. Because he... I mean, I'm sure that in the moment and in the panic of it all and just trying to put it all together, yeah, it seemed like the logical thing to do. I mean, people are not that irrational. I truly believe that every single decision that these people made, they believed was the logical choice at that moment. Yeah... It's just in hindsight, yeah. it all looks so absurd because so many things had snowballed that the logical decision was so outside of the realm. Sucking a dick for, every, I mean, I would, I'd be like, dude, Billy, for a, we're, for we're, a lot of it. I mean, yeah, exactly. So. It's like, uh, it's but a when you look a dick, at the, or, I mean, his dick, his his blowjob was going to be um, quarter, va- valued at a quarter of a million dollars, but. Uh, I'm sorry, man. Number one, I don't think I can deliver on that good of a BJ. And number yeah, that's two, an that's one. an expensive one. And number two, I'm not. I'm not sucking dick for you, bro. You know what I mean? Well, I, what I wanted to know is why didn't Billy just go and suck the guy's dick? It was more fucked up that he's like, oh, you're gay. You're so gay, you're cool so you can this, do right? this. Or like, you must be better at this than I would no, be. Oh, You've I, got some experience. Why don't we send in the big guns? I thought of like, it as like, oh, well, I mean, you're gay. So obviously you you like, you know, you like sucking dick. So it won't be a big. You're going to enjoy it this one. It won't be a big deal for you. Yeah. yeah. It'll just be like a walk in the park. Like the fact that Andy wasn't just like. Fuck you, dude. Like, he actually... What a trooper, man. Like, I, know. I, I got what a so, guy. Res- so much respect Kudos. for him. Like, damn. <laughs> I know. He really is an awesome guy. Like, meeting him and talking to him about the whole thing. And he lost a whole huge amount of his personal money, too. In the yeah. Whole thing. Huge Fucking amount. Billy, dude. Yeah. Are people getting money back from him? Or? God, no. He has no money to give back to people. So people what just, are you talking about? So he like, goes bankrupt, and then people just, and then he's basically just well, like, even sorry. Even kid who sued him and the won the that bald dude, million, on the, the, bald yeah. dude, the one who won five million dollars. Yeah, he didn't get paid for that. There's no money to get paid. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we could all go file lawsuits left and right. I could Class sue the action. homeless person yeah. for spitting on me, yeah. and you know they don't have any <laughs> money to give sucks. me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I'd yeah. win in a heartbeat, but yeah, like that yeah. doesn't help anyone. I I get stuck with legal fees, and I got nothing to show for it. Damn, so the guy's not even getting any money. I mean, so, maybe he will eventually, but, but eventually, to my yeah. knowledge, he has not yet. But su- suing him basically made no sense. Did you think about suing we him? We joined the class action lawsuit. So if uh-huh. something happened, Mark Gregoris or whatever his name is, yeah. um, if something happens with that, we'll get paid. But I mean, I'm not holding my breath. And like I said, I did get you my get, money yeah, back. Yeah, but the people that pay with debit cards right. or um, 
However else, those people literally were screwed out of... And a lot of people didn't even think to dispute the charges. I remember talking to somebody a couple months after and that had gone and they had booked it with Amex. And th- basically Amex was like, so you've, you've missed the boat. Oh, you can't dispute it like three months yeah, after. Yeah. I mean, it was. I mean, it was more than that. I think it might have been like eight months after. Like the oh, bill, the whole year had closed. They yeah. were like, "Oh my god, can I dredge this up?" And they were just like, I, "You really can't." That's. Uh, I'm gonna be totally honest. That's that person's fault. Yeah, I 100. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could not agree more. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we did it that weekend. Like, if you, you didn't need that money that much, so like I, yeah, exactly. you are just yeah. Fine. You're like, oh, I guess I could. I guess I could use that that 4K. It's like, no, dude. If it was me, I would literally be like texting amazon if you thought it was fraud moment. you would have taken care of it i probably would have emailed them i mean we you didn't have any service we, we i would have emailed them, them from the island really we called them from the island oh yeah oh wow. yeah we did you have service some so i mean you had to turn on your roaming it was like the girl the night that we stayed there in the tents okay yeah so, all right, girl, so you're so you're there you see him you like what the fuck is going on we you run wait for two hours we run and, and then get a he tent. says go for it mass hysteria <laughs> I swear to God, you've never seen a group of more deranged people. It's like a Black Friday sale at Saks because yeah. it's like this group of people is not fighting for really, life. and it's not really the group of people who do things like stroll and just go to get a tent themselves, yes. right? So it's just like it's people that are used to having stuff done for them, right? And now so, they're realizing, so now they're like, if I'm going to do this myself, I'm going to get a fucking good tent. You know, if you're not yeah, going to yeah, give yeah. it to me, I paid for this, and everybody thinks they paid more than the person to their right. So yeah. it's like I have a VIP pass. Get out of my way, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Tr- truly. Truly, people were saying like, that pe- because it was like, well, where are the VIP tents? Where are the artist pass tents? Where are the? Uh, everyone had a different color wristband. It was a pain in the ass. Remember the guy with the folding table with the three buckets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the point of that? Just like <laughs> give everybody a wristband and don't give anyone a wristband and just say get over to the island. But every, I mean, and even we we asked at one point when we were in the two hour line, we're like, we paid extra for this VIP pass. Uh huh. Is there a VIP line? Like, yeah. is there a different tent? Can we just go? And they were like, you just need to wait here. Oh, and dude. we're like, okay. So then every mass hysteria, everybody runs to a tent. We find a tent. And we, you know, like sort of hide some stuff in the tent. And we keep our things sort of uh, with on us. Because we have our carry-ons. And then we try to mark the tent with like some lipstick on the side of it. Like a okay. friend of mine just to sort of... To know that it's yours. Because how else are you finding this tent? Because they all look exactly the same. And you're, I mean, honestly, like... You, you're screwed. So we put it on the perimeter by sort of like this, you know, stuck a twig in the ground, yeah. left breadcrumbs, the whole nine yards. Okay, like, yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. you know. And then we we go back to try to figure out what's going on. Uh-huh. And it was as as everybody sort of was there and trying to figure out what was happening, mm-hmm. the rumors started to become a little bit more violent. Yeah, you know about what was going on on the other side of the whole campsite. Because keep in mind, the campsite's huge, right? And this production how how big was it? I don't know. I mean, we drove the bus through for the this entire time all the way around because it serpentined around the uh, okay the lagoon. So like a walk, walk was like a thirty minute walk from the entire camp. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, it was was, a long walk. Okay. It was a long. It was like probably yeah a couple miles, at least a mile, uh, at least a mile. Yeah. Damn. If okay. I need to look so, it up online, so you start hearing. So we start rumors, and then as the sun, when the sun was up, it was sort of everybody was panicked, Frantic, but everybody but, was sort of trying to band together and figure uh, out. All right. Well, where's the water? Where's the food? Because we realized quite quickly that the fire festival people were not going to be helping us. Yeah. We needed to figure this out ourselves, and if we needed to help ourselves to the Amazon crates to do it, nobody was going to stop us because yeah, yeah. they couldn't even. You know what? They're here. Yeah. There's no security. It's free it. for all. Yeah. Right. So we, everyone's sort of swapping information like, oh, the water's over here. The, you know, the beer is over here. The tequila crates are back there. Oh, there's like, only in certain parts of the camp. Well, I mean, it's scattered all over the place. It's just yeah. salt and peppered crates and yeah, yeah, container yeah. trucks all over the place. And then uh, I remember when the sun went down, that camaraderie was over. It was, it all became this panic because there were no lights yeah, it was dark. It's dark. And there were a couple of construction lights that created some of the most terrifying shadows of the <laughs> tents. These tents in the shadows and all of the poles and people running in between the tents. Just people running past your tent in these shadows. I mean, it was terrifying. It's like a horror so, film. It, literally. And so there are these lights and people can't find food. And you don't remember where you are now because you're in the middle of this sea of bubbles trying to find the crate that you remember somebody told you had paper towels in it. And you see people dragging pallets of toilet paper 
whatever and <sighs> pallets of towels like you know in their ripped jeans and like a tank top just in their hairs all over the place and they're it's just, just trying mayhem to, mayhem and, and people are screaming and you hear these rumors about gang rape <sighs> and about rabid dogs and about a local <laughs> about a local wielding a machete and running through all over the place and like screaming and you hear screaming in the background and you hear people calling their friends because no one can find their friends that they came with because they divided and conquered oh. and now they have no idea and there's no cell phone service on half of the camp and I turned on roaming and data and everything like, like that and it, I got yeah. some stuff like there were pockets of service but even with all of that stuff on yeah, yeah, yeah. you really couldn't get a lot of service so and of course there's no Wi-Fi. so yeah, yeah. No <laughs> that, that was that was yeah, long yeah. dead in the there's water no, did they pro- they probably promised there was gonna be of Wi-Fi. of course of course yeah, yeah. oh like, yeah and no like way, don't dude. even bother bringing a portable charger we've got you covered all of these things Gee. and we had brought portable chargers thank, thank God. God yeah you know like was there even electricity no. in, the, in the people were unplugging some of the like other things to try to because there's extension cords running all over the place to try to p- power these construction lights yeah yeah i mean the thing was thrown together from an amazon order like this was oh not my god <laughs> here's screen did anything happen that night that like so i know somebody had some kind of well at least there was a rumor that somebody had some kind of a medical emergency and Ooh. could not receive the help because the ambulance didn't actually work but a friend of mine who was actually he was in the documentary at justin uh-huh. he was like an ea he was uh like a volunteer fireman or something way back in the day and he, really he, or like you know had some kind of emg training and so yeah. he sort of like helped out this group of people who had this metal like had fallen at some point i mean the whole place was uh, such so hazardous that gives him i think a little bit redemption because he was the same guy that was cutting holes in tents he was and, and that was pretty fucked up it's such a tricky thing to say though because the why is it <laughs> is fucked it? up because someone else is trying to stay in no that one tent. else is trying to stay in the tent there were so many there was truly misreported that the festival was full only two planes made it to the campsite oh that's it that's it how many people there were only a couple hundred people there oh there were thousands of tickets sold. most of the people who bought tickets got grounded in miami because things got so bad so like there's no way this is happening they the airline i think is the one who shut the flights down or like the bahaman government was like you cannot let more people onto this island you cannot handle this because they had also stopped the the flight of people who got Chained into the airport, uh-huh. never also never made it to the campsite. They landed in the Bahamas and then got stopped at the airport and were like, got "You are turning around into the Bahamian airport." Yeah, no concessions, no no nothing, just no water, them. no water, no nothing. Dude, did they? You know, I was watching it. And I remember that was the guy who sued for the five million dollars. Oh, the okay, that guy who was in that. I remember watching it and thinking like. That's such bullshit. You you gotta uh, tell someone and then realize like you're in another country. What are you gonna try and sue the government? You don't. You just want to get out of there. Right, like yes, right. you you say that's illegal. They can't do that. It's like okay, is it illegal in the Bahamas? It's, Who knows? Like, yeah, like you prob- know, like yes, probably. Let's be honest. <laughs> but also, it's not your country, and you just want to leave. You're like, I don't want to go back there and sue them for locking me in there. I mean, it's insane. They didn't get water. Right? Well, what I don't understand is why nobody broke a window and just left. Yeah. I, I literally, if I had been in that environment, yeah, I, probably would have, broken a I would have broken a window and I would have left. Well, this is how you know that the people that went to the festival, all in all, on on the scale of like strong to pussy, yeah. were definitely on the pussy scale. It was a mixed bag. It was, yeah. It but, was but a mixed bag. It was, there were no like, uh, you know, MMA fighters there or or, or big, uh, yeah, right, big right. dudes that are going to get in the, because I was surprised no one just started fighting or no one fought some of the, like no one got so pissed that they just went to Billy and like punched, punched him in the him face. Out, yeah. I'm, I was so surprised that that happened. Mm-hmm. So, you know. But with any, kudos get, to people. Yeah, when you get In people that you know uh, who are spend we're, we're 4, looking, we're looking for a refined experience. Exactly, they would think that's not <laughs> how we do it. Yeah, yes. they're like, I'm not going to punch you in the face. Instead, I'm going to cost you ten times as much and uh, have my lawyer <laughs> call I'm you. Gonna, yes, I'm going to give you a phone call. Yes, have I'll give nice, you a phone call. Yeah, nice day. We'll be you, in touch. Yeah, you'll keep your nose. Yeah, but right. uh, you'll lose everything. But else. You won't keep your checkbook. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> the. Uh, the whole, but the whole tent thing was. I mean, he had already had ten thousand dollars of camera equipment or something stolen from him at, Justin the, at that point. Yeah. Oh and so shit! It was basically a who's still. They're all on the island. It, there was so much stuff stolen, really? because at some point, the, this is a lot of this is my conjecture. But at some yeah. point, I think that the the locals realized that they weren't going to get paid, and they just started uh-huh. looting. And they were like, "Fuck these people that came here." 
Um, they have so much money. They have a lot of money. I have nothing. I'm not getting paid for this. This is a fraud. Because, I mean, they started realizing it was a fraud. And they were relying on the festival to be successful for the money to happen, to, for money Every to be year. spent at, no, for money oh. to be spent at the festival that year to get paid for that year. Yes. Yeah. They knew that they weren't getting paid until after the festival because they, that Billy needed the money from the day mm-hmm. of the festival to pay them. Yeah. So as they soon said, as they realized that the festival wasn't going to happen and like, that everyone it, was shutting down, I'll take ten grand worth of a I'll just take equipment. what I can grab. So I think his mentality was just like, and honestly, it's funny because I said if I had had that idea, I would have done the exact same thing. <laughs> Piece of shit. Because think about this: the rumors that you're hearing, it's pitch black. There you're are right. shadows around. You're hearing rumors of locals with machetes. You're hearing rumors of gang rape. Yeah, it's insane. Of, and I'm there with a girl, right? And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to wake up to have her dragged out of my tent and getting raped. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. what the hell? Like, you know, and, and get you too. The match, right? Yeah. They're going to get me yeah. too. Like, forget about her. <laughs> <laughs> but you <laughs> grab your ankles and think of England. You know, oh it's just. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh my god the whole the the whole concept was so frightening when we were there that like you would have done anything you were you in know? survival mode so, exactly. you were truly in like and you made I a might decision. not not i might not make it tomorrow but you're like this sh- you're like shit has gotten more real for me than it ever has in my entire life like right i now. need my, i need to know that my things are going to be safe that i'm not going to have people breaking into my tent i mean we had people breaking into our tent all night like storming through the tent because really? they're, because they're looking for their, for their tent. tent yeah and they're angry and they're mad and they're confused and they are and one girl came in and i said this in the documentary yeah. she comes into the tent she'd lost her friend and she's hysterically crying. She seemed like she was drunk. Uh-huh. And she she says, I you know, I can't find my friend. Can you help me? You can you help me? Can you help me? There's nothing you can do to help a person like that. Yeah, like, exactly. I don't know where I am. Yeah. You don't know where you are. I do not know how to help you. I have no idea who your friend is. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I just need you to leave my tent. <laughs> like I there, but like, you know, what are you what am well, I gonna you could do? Let her sleep on the floor? No, go find your friend. Like, what are you, you know, what are you bothering me for? Like, and who, and who even knows who that is? You know what I mean? Because of all of the rumors that you're hearing, like, is this someone who's coming in with some you, sob story, like those Paris pickpocketers who are like, my baby needs help, and you, you bend just down to the baby? Anyone. You can't. Yeah. Because here's a guy who everyone had been trusting. Yeah. And this is where we've gotten. So I knew I could trust my friend. I can trust myself. Other than that, get get out of here. You know, and that's really what it was. Yeah. I mean, maybe you, you pushed a little bit too much in the uh, being paranoid, but at the same time, like. Right. And in hindsight, sure. Yes. You know? But the hindsight thing for this is really hard for people that weren't there. Right. Because I do try and think about any times when I've thought stuff when i can't think of a specific but anytime that i thought anything is really happening you your brain changes your you, it changes oh, yeah. very quickly oh, and yeah. all of a sudden you go like oh things just got real and i need to think about basically me and then people i care about and i don't give a fuck <clears throat> i don't give a fuck about anyone somebody else. else is there for you you know you you go find them and you figure it out you're there yeah. for yourself you can you need to pull yourself together it's your own fault that you're drunk like why are you still drunk <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah. why are you why, drinking yeah. why on are you this still island? Wasted? Like, get yeah. out of here, you know? It's pretty dumb. And Did other- you stop drinking as soon as you oh, yeah. started realizing? Drop. You were like, okay, drop. this is not no. a place Terrible to be idea. drunk. Especially when it's nighttime. Because you realize you have to cover off on all of these things. You need to find every single one of the things you need to survive. You have to find your food. You have to find water. You have to find shelter. You have to find your luggage. You have to find all of these things. And How'd you find food and water? By looting things. I mean, you know, by like peeling apart these crates of stuff and somebody else had found a bottle of water and like uh-huh. we went and found water. Got some and, water. And so what they, about food? What did you guys what did you guys even get to eat? It was for the, food? it was the fucking cheese sandwich. That this that was like it? this infamous cheese sandwich. That was all we had to eat. And it's funny because everyone's like, Oh, you ate a cheese sandwich, you must have been so upset. I'm like, I was so happy to see someone with a cheese sandwich. I saw someone walking <laughs> down the road. With a, a styrofoam container of food. And I went up to them and was like, where the fuck did you get that? <laughs> I was like, you tell me where you got that cheese sandwich right now. And the guy was like, <gasps> like, <laughs> the guy's like, oh, like it's, it's, it's right down there. There's a tent. And I was like, okay. It's like that. It better be there when yeah. I get there. Or I'm going to be for able you. to find you and beat your ass. <laughs> going to beat your ass. I'm going to wait at the airport because yeah. I know you got to get out of here. <laughs> the cheese sandwich was saved you. It, it saved. I mean, honestly. And we went to the tent with the food and the mm-hmm. people were so nice. Like they're really 
they're like giving out oranges. They're trying to help you. Oh, and the people the, from the island. The or people from, from fire? The, the people from the island. Okay, the people because from the island they were the, knew how that much of a this shit show it was. was a disaster, and that everyone was panicked. And it was this really. I mean, it's a very desperate mentality because you have no sense of what is coming next. And at some point, once we'd covered off on all of the things, we had our food, we had our water, we had our shelter, we had our things. Uh-huh. You realize that you've spent all of this time making all of these things happen, but you have never once addressed the fact that you're stranded on an island. On an, I was going to say on an island, like did you, you didn't even think about how am I going to... So, that's what I'm saying. When you're in that moment, you're not even thinking about surreal. how am I going to get home. You're thinking about how am I going to eat and, and live tomorrow. And it's so funny because we every I, we regret now not having all of these funny pictures of us like smiling in front of a crate of, you know, destroyed uh, yeah. things and, you know, but all you of this stuff. You're not thinking Nothing like that. Nothing was funny. You know, like I had pictures that I was taking because I'm like, I'm going to sue their asses. And yeah. the only reason that I had all of these pictures was because I wanted to file in a lawsuit. Yeah, they were angry pictures. They weren't like, right. oh my God, so crazy I'm eating this cheese sandwich yeah. right now. No, it was not that. It was this anger of it all and this whole do not come here if you're in route because this is not Oh, were you posting well. that on like Twitter or whatever? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just, I mean, it was that was sort of the purpose of it all. It's like, just get out. Get the fuck out. And so... So so okay. So you get all your food. Did you sleep that night at all? A little. We okay. stacked up a couple of towels. We like you remember uh-huh. the girl who looted the towels. All the towels. Yeah. We, we roped back with her uh-huh. and took <laughs> and took a good seven to eight towels each and laid them out on top of our sopping wet mattress. Oh, the mattresses were wet. Sopping wet because keep in mind there was a rainstorm the night before, which is what they blame the entire thing on. Like this was not going to go well. No, rainstorm yeah, bullshit. Or not. Like go fuck yourself. Yeah. You're still throwing a festival on a gravel lot. Yes. Like, the, the grass wasn't going to... Yeah, the yeah. rain should have helped. Yes, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It made the grass grow a little yeah, right. bit. Yeah. The, so we piled some towels up and then and then took like a little rest. And then my friend that I was with, basically, this is when she took the time to go online uh-huh. and read all of the stuff about what was actually happening everywhere else in the campsite and like people who had made who had broken into the production house and had sort of cornered people who worked oh, for people fire had? and were like what the fuck is going on you really? need to give us our money back oh yeah and uh, so a lot of that was on twitter so that's when we learned to, we said all right we're going to go down to the production house and this is like two three o'clock in the morning we go down to the production house and uh-huh. There's like a couple of people outside. They say, "Oh, if you put your name on this list, you can get a refund." Uh, but more, and it's it's great because it's literally an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper <laughs> that just has a couple of people's names scribbled down on it, and it's just like this is. They probably had a paper shredder in the back, and they were like, "Okay, like, yeah, exactly." All right, like, thank Fuck you so much for filling this out. Like, <laughs> just gonna use this to uh, <laughs> steal to use more NYC identities. Exactly, like VIP.com. Yeah. Thanks for putting your email address down. Like, we're Seriously. gonna use this, but. But it was, oh God, it was just hysterical. So we write our names down and then we're, they say, oh, there's going to be a bus. So we go back and we try to get our things very quietly so as to not alert anybody else that we're uh-huh. leaving, right? Because people keep popping their heads out when you're walking past a tenor, like, where are you going? Oh, like, really? What are you doing? Uh, like, why everyone's are you asking up? what's going on. Everyone's asking yeah. what's going on. And you you don't want to, you can't just be dragging your bag through the thing because they're going to be like, can we leave? Like, what's going like, on? Yes, how- and then and more hysteria. Pit, yeah. Okay, so you go, it's like 3 o'clock. We go, it's like 3 o'clock in and the morning. And then there, there was a bus. There, we find out that there's going to be a bus at 5. Okay. So we go back to our tent, and we get our things, and uh-huh. we quietly tiptoe down. And by this point, it's like probably 4, because of all of this fucking walking. Yeah, trying it's to find still our, pitch black. Trying to find our goddamn tent. It's still yes. black. Oh, yeah, it probably took you like 30 yeah, minutes right. to find your tent, find, right? find our fucking tent, and like yeah. pee- pee- peeping in the tents and seeing empty tents, and being like, oh, my God, we're all of our things stolen? Like, is did, this our tent? <laughs> did you did you uh, peep in anyone uh, fucking? Did, do you think there was anyone having sex? 100%. In- Hundred and ten percent. Yeah, if you were absolutely, <laughs> of course. I mean, there was a whole group of people who drank the entire time and like had a party down on the beach. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. shit. But these were the people who had tents in a different section. You know, there, there was one section of tents that went like that. That was actually okay. on the beach that looked like tents that had actually been set up. You can tell it was like the first ones that they did. Oh, and then as they the, were on the further beach they were nice. you got back, I mean, it was this exact same tent. It was just actually set up. The further you got back, the further the, the all shittier. of a sudden it was gravel and there was broken glass. There was uh, no sand. It was on concrete. It was. Like so some people got to like, okay, we can at least get drunk and be on the beach and mm-hmm. I know we're going to leave. But so those people weren't as much pandemonium mm-hmm. as you, you, you didn't luck out and you got thrown into the thick of it. Mm-hmm. Damn. Okay. So you're walking back. You have your, you have your you bag. Have you, we you, get, we get to this line to get on the bus and we get on the bus. We get on the bus maybe at six. Mm-hmm. 
We did not, or maybe we get on it. Maybe we get on at five. We did not leave the campsite until nine thirty, sitting on this bus because they wouldn't let the bus leave because what? the airport was over capacity. Because like little did we know, were there. they'd locked all the people in the airport the night before. Oh my! God. And they couldn't get them out. There were people who were also locked on a plane on the tarmac at one point, and then they like they couldn't get off, and then they moved them to the airport. I mean, it was a disaster because you think about the Miami flight schedule, right? Okay, yeah, so. Yeah. You can't just randomly land a 737, much less seven of them or eight of them or however, however many you need, yeah. on any given Saturday in Miami International Airport. Yeah. You need to be booking this well in advance, and especially yeah. an international flight with the passenger manifests and customs and all of these things, and no one could get it to match back. So they, they got stuck in the airport. So we finally bribed the bus driver to drive us to the airport, even though the fire employees wouldn't let him go. And we just said, dude, why are you listening to them now? Yeah, fuck them. Like, what are you yeah. doing? We need to leave, and we need you to take us there because we'll, we'll, we'll drive this bus ourselves. Like, yeah, get yeah, out, yeah. either get out of the bus and you can stay here, yeah. or like we're going to hijack your bus, or uh-huh. you can drive us there yourself. But this is also... Um, Three hours later, mm-hmm. right? Exactly. And the bus and driver's been there the whole time. The bus, sitting are there. you like trying to maybe sleep the a little bit because you're so up. tired? No, we're trying. Everyone's trying to get answers about what has just happened to us. Oh Talking to each God. other, figuring out what other people were doing, what's uh-huh. been happening. You know, you're up. So the bus driver finally drives us to, and there are people now because everyone else has woken up that are surrounding the bus, trying to get on the bus oh, because all of a sudden they realize that there's a bus to the airport. Uh-huh, and they hear it, yeah, and they see because uh, it's nine a.m. It's, it's nine a.m. It's, 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 it's time to be awake. The There's yeah. bright sunshine, you know. It's all, the Bahamas. It's a beautiful exactly. day in the Bahamas. They're done, like <laughs> they're done banging, and uh, and they're up. They're re- yeah, exactly up and ready. It's just Shit. like rabbits. So you you want it? You you convince him to? We convince him. What to does go. he just drive out of this group of people? He drives through the group of people. Okay, no one gets hurt. Ridiculous. Yes, so, that we knew of. We drove away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there would be no way of knowing because no one actually got hurt, right? There were no allegedly. That that is what they. Say. I mean, I think that there were definitely the odd casualty, and I yeah. did. I. I truly no believe or... no. There were no fatalities. I yeah. mean, somebody had an asthma attack. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So there's that. Yeah, which is ah, uh, yes, which is but, terrible. Yeah, but no one died. No, no one died. broke a bone or anything. No. Which I mean is it's miraculous. Is, really, is miraculous yeah. that no one fucking fell off the ravine into the lagoon. One hundred percent insane. Yeah, Wild. or no one. There was definitely some SEDs circulating. Yeah, definitely some SEDs. Or something. Maybe a new type of SED. Maybe something maybe from the gravel. Was born, something yeah, in the, the water. Gravel. Yeah, gravel dick. Maybe Perfect. something like that. that yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> it went. It went all around. It was circulating. That for sure happened. But okay, so you're on the bus. You're going to the airport. You're like, fuck. We finally got out of that hellhole. I can't believe that happened. But well, you're and, not out of the hellhole yeah. yet because now you're in line at the airport. I'm saying you're just like, I'm done with the campsite. Oh, yeah. No, you're yes. out of that. That's I'm done for- with the FEMA camp. I'm at <laughs> least at the done. airport Disaster where there relief. are things that can get me off of this island. Yeah, right. But joke's on you because all of the commercial flights were booked because it was the fucking regatta. So you couldn't book a flight to get off the island yourself. You had to once again wait for the fire Festival employees to put their ducks in a row to get you off this fucking island. Shit. And if this festival had taught us one thing so far, it's uh-huh. that these friendly folks were not excellent planners. Hell no. So we, they're trying now to like corral people into groups and there's only like like two of them there, mind you. The rest of the people who are trying to be helpful are all people who work for the airline. Yeah, so yeah. they've they've enlisted the help of these confused locals who are the, just the like moral wired. of the story is that all the, the people in the Bahamas are so much better than anyone from the fire. Oh festival. my god. The moral of the story is anybody who worked for fire was just poorly staffed. Exactly. It was just poor, 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 poor staff. I reached out to that dude, Mark Weinstein, who was mm. one of the coordinators mm-hmm. who got fired. I don't think he was at the actual festival, no. but he got fired right before. Yeah, he he must have been so happy he didn't go. Yeah, because I mean, dude, like, what? Okay, so you're there, you're reaching out. the 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 people are trying to help. How long are you at the airport before? Like three more hours. Gee, so it's like noon. Like out in the maybe sun, they one. wouldn't let us stand inside the airport. Oh, you were outside. The, the airport is smaller than your apartment. Like Seriously. the full airport. This is this is a small unsettled yes. island. You know, this is yes. it's literally yeah, yeah. a two room airport. One room is the gate, and one room is the check in. Wow. And they're both the size of, you know, your parents' bedroom. Like, it's just, they're not not these big rooms. So, it's not meant for these many people. 
Like the airport would never even go through in, in a day the number of people who are trying to fly out on one plane. They're, the planes oh that land at that God. airport aren't that big. You know, it's just not, this is not what it's designed for. Well, do, do people usually then take a boat over there? No, you fly on these little okay. island hoppers. Because I know S- Sandals was supposed to be on that island. Yeah, it, it is. It is. Because right a lot of people go to Sandals. Yeah. Don't so they? you either, I mean, you can fly from Miami, right? Yeah. Or you can fly on these, you know, bootleg airlines, or you yeah. can fly from uh, Exuma. Or sorry, yeah. you fly from uh, NASA. Oh, okay. You fly from Miami to NASA, and then NASA to Great Exuma. That's more Jeez. common on a little puddle jumper. Okay. And so, so, are you are you eating at all? Do you have anything to eat? No, we didn't either. Oh, actually, no, we did. There was a restaurant across the street from the airport that we went. <laughs> and you were to. able to go we get like an egg sandwich, like some actual food. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you're like, you guys have any cheese sandwiches? And at that point, I they were like, had... trust me, we have better than. Yeah, right. Trust, thank God, the, all the cheese is at fire. <laughs> <laughs> They've used the cheese in the bread, but we've got the rest of it. What kind of cheese was it? Was it cheddar? No, it was American. It was, it was American ugh. cheese. Terrible, terrible sandwich. I mean, God. everyone's like, nobody's commenting on the quality of the sandwich. I, I don't even remember. All I yeah, remember you... is the bread was soggy and. <laughs> It really bothered me because they had like put the tomato. My tomato was not on the side. Uh-huh. It was like on, the, on bread, the bread and the bread got a little soggy. Dude, if you're making a sandwich, you know that you put the tomato on right at the end so it right doesn't sog end. up the bread. Right at the end. Come on. But honestly, like I go, I, I cobbled that thing down so yeah, fucking you fast. Loved it. You were so it was happy. so happy. I just loved that sandwich. Okay, so you get you get eat some this food. egg sandwich. We're Thank waiting. God. We're waiting. And then this is a great part of the story. This <laughs> this woman who has been like claiming for this entire time that there is this like beautifully organized process to get us all safely aboard a plane. Uh-huh. And she is really into her script. She's reading it. Yeah. She <laughs> is saying it over and over. Yeah. She loves her job and good for her. Uh-huh. But no one was having it. You know, because yeah, like... People like bullshit. <laughs> people like, go fuck yeah. yourself. We've seen this. And so she is like, okay, now is the time we are going to be handing out tickets for those of you. And we knew that there were more people at the gate trying to check into the flight than there were seats on the flight. So we knew that mm-hmm. everybody who was there, because people had made it there who weren't even on the bus, who had like climbed over the fence and, and broken just out. Walked? and or, t- or like uh, Got, hitchhiked. No, yeah, hitchhiked. Jeez. Yeah. And uh, we knew that not everybody was going to make it on the flight. So... Uh, it was another it's, bum it's rush. the last lifeboat off the Titanic. It yeah. was another. It was just absolute madness. People just cramming in, just trying to like get this ticket, and the tickets were pieces of receipt paper that had been handwritten on that said "ticket" and then your name. That's it. That was the official ticket. And then there was a number in the corner. I was like, you've got to be shitting me. This cannot be the real federal piece of paper. I Listen, and at this point, and then we get th- we get our tickets, all right? So uh-huh. we made it. We get our tickets. Another hour goes by, and it's just so clear that we're not getting out of there. Yeah. Like we was, it was just things were going from bad to worse. The restaurant had like closed. Yeah, like you know, I mean, it was out of food. Like, probably, it was like yeah. The, the it was just, and we're in the middle of nowhere now in the Bahamas, and we we really considered just booking a hotel and staying there, but nothing was open because it was the the regatta. The regatta. So. We basically just said, this has gotten so out of control that we need to leave. So we contacted a pilot on the island and flew from the island to NASA ourselves. Who? How many Me people? and my friend. Oh, that's it? Yeah. What, did you guys, you guys just slip him some money? We like slipped you... on a little propeller plane and he flew us. How much was it to fly in a propeller plane, dude? It was really cheap. Was it really? It's the Bahamas. What? Yeah. Like a couple hundred bucks? Yeah. It's just Seriously? Like, yeah. It was like, oh my I don't God. Even think it was $1,000. Dude, that's, I mean, in the moment, you're like, fuck it. I don't give a shit. Yeah. I that's, mean, but a yeah. thousand, I mean, 500 bucks to like get off that island. I would have paid yeah. 10. Yeah. I would have no. paid $10,000 to get off that island. 100%. Jeez. I, I mean, at that point, you could have probably booked a uh, hotel, but yeah. at that point, you no, wanted to get out of no, there. Well, you couldn't. There was nothing. There were no hotels. There was nothing available because I would have done it. I literally was at the point yeah. the night before where I, I called Sandals. I said, I will book a villa. I said, I will book. Half of them had been booked by fire, you know, and I was like, and there yeah, were yeah. people in them. Yeah. And then the other, everything else was the regatta. I said, I like, you literally have no rooms. I was like, I will sleep in your sewer. I will sleep on a couch in your <laughs> lobby. Like, just can I come over and. And the, no, damn! No, they had nothing. They were over capacity. Holy All shit! All of the hotels. On Some the people island. were staying at villas at um, at Sandals, though. That's what a I. Couple. That's what I heard on one of the buses. Oh, and some of the people lucky on. Ba- Dude, I you know. guys should have found them and been like, "You have no idea." Well, they stayed at their villas. Yeah. 
of shit. It's like the people who were out on the cruise ship. All of the influencers that they had out on the cruise ship. Oh, I forgot about the cruise ship. Mm-hmm, that was there. The people who worked for Fire. Uh huh. And the influencers that they brought down were all like coasted up on a cruise ship with binoculars. So what did the, did the, the influencers get there and then realize how much of a shit show it was and then go back out to the cruise ship? I don't think they ever came to the island. Really? Those girls? Oh, those girls who were like pouring tequila and stuff. Yeah. Well, they were just like hanging out and pouring tequila. They probably yeah. went back to the cruise ship to sleep. <sighs> So half these people, they those people can't even be like, oh, I lived through fire. It's like you didn't do shit. You were on a cruise ship. Like, for like I would two really days. like to talk to somebody who was on this cruise ship, uh-huh. but I've never actually met. I mean, I would never admit it if I was on the cruise ship. You know oh yeah, because I mean? that's, like, that's you couldn't you couldn't get that story out of me. That's hatred. Like yeah, that's people would be like, you are. You know, start sharpening the pitchforks exactly. and lighting up the, the torches. Yeah, They're ready to go. God. So you man, did no one else uh, hire a, a pilot? How'd you find the pilot? We call it the uh, private airport. Okay, and so you're like, do you have any pilots that we, are willing? We, we were just like, we need to, we need to leave this island immediately. And it was just and, you couldn't uh, get anyone else on it. But just well, it wasn't guys. even us. It was our friends. It was my friend's mom uh-huh. who called. I think mom's coming. God bless them. Yeah. And because uh, it was, I mean, we had, at this point we had called our parents and like told them what was going we're on. Like, mom, we we might die. We were yeah. like, listen, th- this we we need to get off this island, and we're going to get off this island, yeah. and we're going to talk about this later. Basically, was the conversation that I had yes. with my parents. I was like, we, I am not going to be. I can't explain doing you. this anymore. Yes. And you can look this because at this point the news story had broken as well. And this is on yeah. this is front page news. And my parents, I mean, of course, knew I was going to this festival. Uh. And uh, you know, they they I called them up. I said, listen, I am gonna take extreme measures to remove myself <laughs> from this island and this situation, and uh, we're gonna figure it out. And so basically my intention was to just charter a jet and get off the island yeah. and fly back to like New York. At but least, dude, at least you had the didn't ability have to, do that. to. Yeah, I know, but at least you were like that was possible. Right. Some people, I mean, yeah. thank God. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's like the the whole thing was just. But also, most of the people there have fucking money, dude. So like any of them. Right. Yeah. And it's funny because when we got to the private airport, it was like there were other kids there who were uh, like mommy and daddy like they them were up. they yeah. were moving uh, they were they were getting out but we showed up and we were so ratty and so gross and then they had a show so we showered at the <laughs> airport and we changed and then. Uh, and then we got onto this like little t- dinky plane, and then we uh, we flew up and away. Jeez! To, and we went to Atlantis, off. and we stayed on Atlantis for the weekend. Oh, you went to <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you didn't go back home. <laughs> nope. Well, I mean, we had the flights from Miami booked for a four day weekend, uh, right? Yeah. So, like, you know, I'm not going to rebook my flights. I, I wanted to go away for the weekend, right? That was the point of this. And at this point, we knew we were getting our money back from Amex, anyways. No. So we're like, fuck it. So I gambled for the weekend, and I made. A whole bunch of money at the casino oh, <laughs> dude that's insane that's so bad people are like oh you really struggled and i'm like you know what and the truth of it is is i did but fuck i that, made out dude. so well you 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 know what man fuck i got that. my you, i got my you, money back you had I gambled the whole weekend i made money and now i'm famous so like <laughs> what are you what are you gonna do <laughs> instead of a netflix fired documentary famous that's damn right. what's your what's your gambling game what do you like craps dude me too that's the Fucking, only one to do that's the, that's the best, best one. odds in the house craps, it is the best odds it's the shit dude. it's so, so much fun, fun. damn it's so you were in, you were in atlantis in atlantis so gambling last, by the pool exactly last free minute. drinks i mean that was what fire was supposed to be like so right? like at 24 hours after you had been in the worst shape of your life it was you the were, strangest you were experience. in in atlantis gambling did you at like take a second and go it was wild what the fuck just happened? It was it was honestly what was that fever dream. It was the most surreal thing because we got we got there and it was a friend of ours's family's apartment oh, at Atlantis. Damn, so dude. it's this networks, like, man. It it was it's like this beautiful apartment and it's on it was on like the twentieth floor. Oh, looking so you didn't out. have to buy uh, no oh. oh no oh it worked out great we should have done this from the beginning forget about the festival we should have just done this as a weekend trip <laughs> we get down there and we we pull into it even just pulling onto the atlantis property and all of the palm trees and everything and it's just so luxurious and it's so uh-huh. nice it was just it, the whole experience was so surreal because you and then we pull in and we get there and they're like can we can we take your coats can we take your bags can we do yeah. all of these things you know and, and then they found out that we'd been to the festival and yeah. they felt so awful that we had been to this festival so, yeah. because they, I mean, they, it they looked bad on it. all of the Bahamas. Yeah. The entire, the tourism board of the Bahamas was having a panic attack because they were oh. like, no one's going to come to the Bahamas yeah, anymore, yeah, which yeah. I mean, it did really impact tourism oh, to great it? Exuma. Yeah. 
Oh, it really fuck. negatively impacted Great Exuma tourism. I know. Yeah. And so I remember having a conversation with one of the people there that was like, yeah, my, my sister lives on Great Exuma and she thinks she's going to have to move because they already think that it's going to be so bad from this, the press around You know this. what it actually, well, the shitty part is that the fact that a Netflix documentary came out with the name of the place, I think might make it worse because now people know. Because mm-hmm. before, if you were booking Greater Exuma, you wouldn't know that's where fire was unless True. you happened to be looking into it. True. But now that they saw that, they're... I don't know. We'll see. I mean, maybe the Netflix documentary will help because people... I think it'll... Well, I mean, listen, at least they'll have their money back. Exactly. At least they're getting their money. But she... So you fly in on a Friday, deal with all that bullshit, and then by Saturday night, you're at Atlantis and, are, and, and you're like, I'm good. It was that is a that is such a wild yeah. span, yep. uh, like a diametrically opposed. Literally, <laughs> I was just gonna say the same fucking thing. Like I was gonna say experience. diametric opposition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Holy fuck. Okay, so then you're there for two days, and then you fly it on Monday. And we fly. We flew to Miami, and then we flew on the same flight we had booked for ourselves to fly back from Fire from Miami to Boston. So wow. I was. I mean, honestly, that whole Bahamas trip, not the Fire part, but the Atlantis part of the Bahamas trip, was so bizarre because that, fire had just happened so every time were you just like waking up like oh i oh it, there's it water feels, I, it felt like a fever dream it's did it like, feel it, fake the entire it, time the were you, whole were you expecting to wake up from that still in your tent like mm-hmm. oh oh no <laughs> it was well i wasn't like oh no it was like yeah. oh thank god no i'm saying oh, were yeah. you expecting to wake up from that then in like it oh, was yeah. a dream oh, while yeah, you were yeah, yeah, yeah. at fire it, still. the whole thing just it was so surreal like oh, the whole god. and it's like half of it's one way half of it's the other it's like did fire did that happen? really happen yeah or did we just fly here like and of course it's all over the news right i mean it's it's are people hitting everywhere. you up because they know you're like, there like, everyone is, everyone's panicked like it's yeah. just you know oh my god have you gotten out like what's happening are you still on the island you know it's like front page news for a really long amount of time and then I was in the Snapchat story that's now and of course Snapchat was still popular then so yeah. it, they had all of their like you were in a news snap story? things the like public snap story things yeah. what, I was like the tile for it for real like it was my face saying oh my god and it just says disaster in the bahamas and it's just my face going like, <laughs> like <laughs> Damn. so i had so many people hitting me up from that and Are then you okay and, like what right happened? what's yeah. happened and of course i'm you know sitting drinking a pina colada and yeah it's like it, it you're constantly being brought back to this yeah. like really like frightening some might say, I, I, I like to say the word trauma for war, but like it was traumatic. It was definitely, yeah. I mean, you were like, you were scared that night, like, yeah. what's gonna happen? Yeah, you didn't think anyone there was gonna do anything, but at well, the you same didn't time, know who was there, you didn't know what was going on, yeah. And people were spreading rumors, damn. So, when you get back, did you like, uh, were people hitting you up for interviews? Did you kind of just like go back to your normal That's life? Funny. What happened? No one, there was no immediate press, uh huh when we got back at all there was you know there was no like oh interviews news like the news sort of died down the news you know and especially as the lawsuits with billy started happening i think everyone was just sort of so focused on that that there wasn't and then netflix of course hit me up obviously the how long after did netflix hit you up just this past summer oh okay yeah yeah, oh so because it happened 2017 2017 so they hit you up a year and a half later a half later so it was oh. actually a very interesting experience because I don't really like talking about it because it's tedious, right? I mean, I've told the story so many times yeah. now. And, but this one, I think it's everyone, like the full story, right. which is nice. And everyone wants the inside scoop. So, yes. they, you know, you have a couple of things that you tell them, right? Uh-huh. A couple of little ditties that you yes. just go, oh, well, you know, about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, then you just move on. And then they're like, no, tell me more. And it's like, oh, my God. Oh, I, I must have been horrible just meeting people. Like miserable. Any friends were like, "Tell me what happened." Yeah. So I any don't. I don't bring it up. People like, were ever. like, "Hey, tell me." You're like, "Dude, just I. I just want my sandwich." He's like, like "Tell me about fire." Yeah. Right. It's just because it, you're still wearing the wristband. Yeah. I'm saying, <laughs> got the hat on. Yeah, don't yeah. talk to me. Yeah. The. Do you have any of the apparel? Yeah, I have the hat. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stole oh it from. God, I stole I want it from one somewhere. of those. So oh, yeah. They had a pop up shop in Tribeca with just fire apparel, and I missed it. After? Yeah, like very recently. What? Like maybe three or four months ago. That's that's what they should have done it right when the documentary dropped. I know. I mean, I that don't know who stupid. had the pop up shot. It was probably I would have. Like, I would have like Rule and Billy McFarland. I would have bought a fucking fire hat if I knew it didn't go to them. Right. I yeah. mean, I I think 
I don't know if it was a fundraiser, but yeah. if it wasn't, it certainly should have been. Should have been. Dude, you could if you had bought if you had jacked like ten of those hats, you could have made some fucking bang. Oh yeah, on you them. could one hundred percent. Yeah, sell you could those. sell a hat for two hundred dollars. Like easily and you someone think? would buy. Dude, I think maybe. People are stupid. I, dude, well, think about some of the fucking people that went yeah, to this right, festival, right. man. Yeah, right, right. I wanted to talk. Yeah. <laughs> not even, I'm saying some of the dumber fucking people. Oh, the people yeah. getting drunk as fuck oh, on the no, beach, right. like not worrying about. that. That's an, uh, another level. It's a level. bold thing to do bold. in those circumstances to be like, you know what we're going to do? We're Let's fine. Get roaring drunk. It's like there's, their life has been so good, they don't even they don't even think that something bad can happen to them. Like that's... Yeah, I just it's it was really a a curious yeah. thing to see how people handled it so differently. Like I handled it the way I did, you, yeah, and you were I, like I think it yeah. was a good way that I handled it. I mean, I got out of there. I'm safe, you know. I was nourished, and nourished. then by <laughs> there, that cheese, by that yeah. cheese and that bread and that yeah, lovely yeah, lettuce yeah. tomato. Um, and then there are people who were just like, you know, fuck it. And I don't know really that one way is better than the other because I bet it, they had a blast. It, sh- it shows the different paths humans yeah. can take in, uh, you know, the apocalypse. Yeah, you're right. This is- <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you, you don't like talking about it. You kind of forget. It's been a year. Well, you, I don't, I mean, I, I never think to bring it up, right? Yeah. Because it's never been brought up. Why would you bring it up? And it's, then, uh, and then all of a sudden this summer, right. Do you get an email? With- they, uh, so, uh, of the friend of mine who I went with, uh, huh. She gets hit up on YouTube because she had made a YouTube video about it shortly after. Uh, and so she had all of this footage from she had, that mm-hmm. she had taken when we were there. Yeah. She posted it on YouTube. And then the Netflix crew reached out yeah. and said, can you please provide your footage? Uh, We'd like to use your footage. We're making a documentary. Mm-hmm. They see the footage. They're like, oh, you also went. Like, do you want to do an interview with us? Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, Sure. But you know who you should really talk to is this is friend of mine, Mark, Mark right? Yeah. You know, like this is it, – because it, she just, you know, like really isn't about the whole like – Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. She's not great in front of a camera. Yeah, I got you. you. Know, God bless her. Yes. Yeah, good, good for her. She, <laughs> That's great. No one gets to know who she no is. No one yeah. gets to know. Yeah. And she uh, – so she's like, you know, you should really talk to this guy. So she wasn't even in the – she was in the movie like very, very briefly, just sort of like a uh-huh. cameo. But it was – she wasn't ever interviewed. Uh, her interview wasn't in the movie. And so they then reached out to me. She said, is, oh, is it okay if I give – my contact information, uh, you know, uh-huh. to these people. So she did. And I said, sure. And then I talked to Mick, who's the CEO at Fuck Jerry, yeah. and talked to him about the project and, what, you know, what he really wanted to do and what the point of it was. Because a lot of people were were, were saying that uh, this documentary, was the Netflix one, was biased because Fuck Jerry made it. Right. And so what are your thoughts on that? Because you were there, you know? The thing of it is, I, I believe that they didn't know any more than we did just because why would you they fire gave them the press kit to do the posts from it was a huge client for them you know they had just founded jerry media group like fuck jerry and all these individual instagram accounts existed but they had just come together and founded jerry Jerry media Media, group to do media planning media buying social strategy all of these things and so it was a huge opportunity. So why would they look at this amazing opportunity with such a skeptical light? I mean, this is another hindsight thing. And you know also, what I mean? Billy McFarland lied to all the investors right. and said they he had, had all of this money. They lied yeah. to their vendors, and now to see the footage that comes in as please use this for your, uh, you know, for all of your posts and everything. Here's uh-huh. the whole credentials kit. Here's all of your. Specs. It looks great, and it's all these Instagram models. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's just sort of like you know, you assume that somebody else has checked it out, right? It's by yeah. you know, what is it? called when it's it's not the bystander effect is it when you just sort of assume that somebody else has figured it out and you don't i don't worry think about it's it. that but yeah yeah you, but you, that, you, you, oh that is a bystander effect when you're yeah. watching something bad happen you think oh someone else someone else has it. figured it out but it's kind of like, but it's similar to that in the sense that yeah. all of these other people are associated with it why would you think that this is fraud and they ended no up getting fired i think didn't they uh jerry media they no. so i thought they fired them as their social media team and they were like oh didn't they fire them on the bahamas, on the bahamas during the festival during yes. during the festival they were like hey can i you, didn't yeah they were like hey can you give send the login the, to, the our, log new to our new social team yeah Wild. which you know definitely didn't help can uh, you imagine trying to restaff in the middle of that what's the point 
What is the point? You I are literally truly, in the throes are, of this festival. It is failing. You are crumbling. And you're like, you know what we're going to do right now? We're going to restaff. Yeah, it's like, let's, let's rebrand. It's yeah. Like, no, dude, you are in the middle of not a dumpster fire, but an island fire. Like It's such every, a classic thing to do. Let's rebrand. Yeah. Now's a great time. I mean, dude, let's Billy do it. Billy was till the end like, this is going to work out. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you get, hit by, you get hit up by them and you do your interview and then this comes out, right? Yeah. And did you and did you meet anyone are. else uh, involved with the production? Yes, yeah, so I met everyone, everyone who yeah. was there. At, we there was a premiere on Monday, l- what two Mondays ago, last Monday. So were you guys just like laughing about how insane it was? It was? And, I mean, yeah. it's so funny in hindsight, like because everyone was safe and we yes. all like most you know everyone really like most of us somehow either recouped our loss or People like a lot of you know money. it's like yeah. I, I mean or they didn't need it so it didn't really matter like it yeah. just I mean it's his, and it's a hysterical turn of events and yeah. it's so outrageous that it just you have to look at it in that way i mean you do for sure and so th- that was it was really great to meet everyone it was really great to sort of like hang out with everybody and, yeah. and just sort of do that and that's been like a blast that's been the, and now you're you're riding that second wave and slowly that it's uh because it was watched by a lot of people i think i know it well it seems up. like everybody has seen it it's yeah. really outrageous i mean i've been stopped on the street now seriously i think it's hysterical i got stopped on the street last night somebody wow. had asked to take a picture with me that's so well, funny. dude were you in the fire festival documentary i was like yeah he was like, like can i take me. a picture with you i was like i mean sure like i don't know what you're gonna do with this but yeah sure. <laughs> exactly here i want to before we leave i want to see if anyone asked any good fo- um any good questions? Just, just read all. I, just got, I the love questions. him. Uh, do you listen to Nickelback? I have. Do you, there's no way you listen to Nickelback. <laughs> if so, what's his favorite song? That's the yeah. People want to people want to know where you get your hair cut at, like this because they're like they're either into your haircut or not. It's like and some of these things, obviously, it's like dude, he's gonna just keep his own thing but yeah. we know that the shirt's from vineyard vines we know that the shirt's from vineyard vines yeah i they, get my hair cut at that what the hell is that place is that place's name at paul stewart hold on paul stewart you do, I'm, I'm assuming you don't listen to nickelback i mean i have listened to nickelback <laughs> in my life yeah but it's not uh not the thing you're listening to right now no wow so usually I get it cut in this like place in Mystic, but if I get it cut in New York, I get it cut at Fleischmann's. This is actually a really good place. You Fleischmann's. Should, you okay, good to know. This. I'll go you check should, it out. Yeah, you should Fleischmann's. That. Oh, awesome, dude. Fantastic advice for you. Yeah, and um, I mean, I I think that's all. I actually yeah. don't want to uh, ask a lot about anything personal with you because, to be honest, I kind of want you to just keep your life to you you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. like i don't want people to know like oh he does this he works and does you know what i mean it's like yeah. that's your shit and you've had enough yeah, plastered out there it's definitely been a, yeah. been a wild ride yeah i mean i do do things you yes know? exactly yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that is, that like is what so are did you go on a vacation this year to make up for yeah, that I one went, i did europe you did europe I did okay europe. so that, cool. that i just sort of abandoned the bahamas you're like yeah i have not been back i don't I, mean, need... I love europe it's so great and you go and everybody it, what's funny is everybody thinks that like ever, parisians hate americans uh-huh. but they really only hate americans who suck the shitty they, they hate the americans that you also hate you know what exactly. i mean it's just like they, they everybody hate probably a lot of the people that went to the fire festival they hate yes. losers like yes. <laughs> <laughs> like who doesn't so we went and we had a fantastic time like i you know strolling around paris i was there for like two weeks and i don't think i had a bad encounter with a parisian in the entire time i was there and that was fantastic and then we went to zanzibar and qatar oh, and sweet. Uh, did this whole little and like ireland and my mom met me in ireland and it was like absolutely fantastic it's fantastic yeah and now you're just working and, and now I'm just and... I'm just working away and uh did you ever have dreams about fire? No. No. You no, never had never any had. dreams where you like thought back to it and you no, like No, I have you were so many there? work dreams really? that I think that they like overwhelm my What do you do for work that it's dreams. always in your dreams like that? You know, and it's nothing exciting. I work in sort of this mezzanine financing arm of the Interpublic group okay. of companies. So it's all media, it's all advertising and we make like investments in up and coming digital media companies. Like a fuck Jerry or something. Like a fuck Jerry or something okay. like that, which is funny, isn't it? Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, and uh, in, in exchange for our investment, we get like favorable non-disclosed rates on the inventory. And then oh, our, right, our clients do media for right, you or anything? Our clients buy uh, media through our investment deals and uh-huh. we give our clients a portion of the savings and yeah, yeah, we yeah. keep a portion of the savings okay. to pay back our investment. So and, just a, a classic like uh, finance job, but you're not like on stocks. But, right. But yeah. it's very like marketing focused. I went to college for marketing Marketing and job. Okay. Yeah. Where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to Bentley for finance and then Emerson for marketing. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah. So are you really Originally from Boston? No, I'm from uh, Connecticut. I'm Connecticut, from Mystic. Connecticut. Okay, yeah. And then I went to school. In yeah, because when I asked you about your shirt, you're like, I think it's, it's going to be in Connecticut. <laughs> I, when you told me that, dude, I was like, I could not have written a better thing to come out of this guy's <laughs> mouth than, oh, sorry, the shirt that I wore to get an interview about the luxury festival that I went to is stored oh, sorry, in my Connecticut it's house. It's in my Connecticut house. It's yeah. in storage. Yes, it's in storage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it can, it's put, it's on a statue in it's the middle crisp, of Greenwich right now. Crisply yeah. adhered to Ex- a mannequin. Ex- it's been moved into a cedar yes, closet exactly. and it will be stored cedar. there <laughs> until I come and open it. Preserved yes. in its little chamber for the next uh three months <laughs> multiple closets dude i um thank you so much for this doing has this been great yeah this is you're like very fun and funny and i, I appreciate you going through all of it and uh, you Again. know dropping those tidbits oh yeah, yeah. and I, I think anyone listening will now get a full idea of like fucking the start to finish i mean oh did do do you know how long the people that were in the airport had to stay there until they got out because no, you got out you got out no like a little idea. bit after I have no idea did they have to stay another night or anything i have no clue fuck i know yeah. terrible terrible in, do, you, do you keep in contact with anyone else from the festival no one that i met from the, fe- at no. the festival no <laughs> no no but so you funny. know justin and and i know justin and i mean I, obviously i know everyone now who was in the documentary but it's, it's funny because like I got all of these people's phone number when we were at the festival and we were texting about the lawsuit and I kind of thought that they would reach out to me uh-huh. after the documentary aired and not and I haven't heard boo I mean like nice. I've heard from these middle school people that I've never really? people who you, I went to summer camp with so, once who just like reach out and they're like hey what's I up I saw you yeah hey what's up oh. like you've been having a conversation oh, like for all of these years like, two like weeks ago yeah like nothing's happened just hey what's up like there's no mention of the documentary I'm like I uh-huh. know why you're texting me I'm not a fucking idiot like, yeah also people see you on on the dock and they immediately are like oh he has uh, 60 million dollars now it's oh like, I no. know I love it it's so great people yeah. are like oh my god what are you gonna do with your newfound money and I'm like what money no <laughs> money dude <laughs> where it's is a it doc- <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Where's the money? Where's the money? Can you <laughs> yeah. cash you should, a check? You know what you should have done? You should have tried to do that uh, treasure hunt when you were on the island and looked uh, to see. I, I should have just stolen something. Yeah, I should have been like, I found this. Is this the treasure? Yeah, just, just a, a, a laptop or something. Something. I'm so, you could, should have found Billy on that uh, ATV when he was driving around. I should have stolen the ATV. I mean, like the things. Anything. Like, the fact especially that no one beat his ass or found him it astounds me. I think, honestly, he was so lucky that it was such a survival mode that everyone was so focused on themselves that no one I think also the fact that it was one was day yeah if it had, if you had been there multiple days there would have been yeah, blood. Right. 100%. blood yeah blood would have been spilled because if it had been on an actual private island and we had no like private charter service or commercial airlines or other hotels or cell yeah. phone service or anything like that this would be a completely different story yeah you're right because it's kind if, of... if he had thrown it on Norman's Key and had flown us all to the Pablo Escobar Island, Norman's yeah. Key. And oh he, shit! I just he remember had thrown it there. There's no. That's a private airport. It's a. It's a completely private airport. You, if you wanted to charter a plane to that airport, you would have had to call like days, and it would cost you twenty thousand dollars just to land a plane there for them to find the oh. tarmac. There's no cell, radio tower. There's no nothing. It's a private island that has a tarmac on it. That's it. It just has a landing strip on a private island. Yeah. You can't even have more than one plane on the landing strip at a time. So. You you can't just land a plane in there. You'd have to find a rogue pilot like that guy in the documentary Keith, yeah. to go and do it. Like, and you can't just find those people on a whim. So, like it, it, that would, and there would have been no cell phone service because they never would have built the infrastructure for no cell way. service on that island. So, in that case, how on earth would you have gotten off that island? You it would have, have had to get a boat or something. Yeah, that, that it actually like. Thank God it moved islands. I, I would have had been, that thought many times. It would have been even worse. Fuck. I know. Thank God, right? 
because now you're here and you know no one got killed you yeah. didn't have to you didn't have to kill someone have to kill and then ha- and then have to drop it on this podcast that you had to murder someone that you know been uncomfortable it would have been gr- it would have been yeah it would have been great for ratings but yeah, yeah right, it would have right. been uncomfortable the roof. to see you have to deal with that yeah, yeah and that process what exactly I've revealed. Process that yeah you right in front of you <laughs> there would have been no atlantis <laughs> no, no no Atlantis. or if there was that would be even more interesting oh, you know how you sudden. got there yeah I'm like were you involved with the fire festival from the beginning <laughs> oh shit Mark thank you so much uh, man thank you you've been the shit it's been fun 